recording. Okay, hi everybody. Um, my name is Dana Dirksen. Uh, we'll get started here. Um, and I guess people can join us when they get here and I'll try and let them in. Um, so today we're just gonna go over sort of where Cherry Hill is in terms of uh, library resources. Um, and, you know, kind of show you some of the open access. Um, resources. I know some of you do have colleges and universities where you're either teaching or, you know, you have alumni uh, access to those. Um, we won't be going too much into the paid uh, sources, but um, if anybody has problems searching certain products, you know, let me know. I'm in the library. I I respond to email fairly quickly. I can set up a Zoom and we can go through um, how to find what you're looking for. And I can also, um, you know, we've had some situations where, you know, people don't have access at all. And sometimes, sometimes I can figure out a way to uh, find certain things if there's specific articles that you're looking for. So I've been at Cherry Hill for about over 10 years. I've been either a student or a volunteer. I was on the board from 2013 to 2016 as the VP. Um, then I did the uh, community ministry certificate, which was really great. Um, and I finished that in 2018. And then last year, um, uh, Terry Hill was missing a librarian and I have a degree from uh, the University of British Columbia School of Library and Information Studies. And so I asked if I could be of help. And Holly was like, oh my gosh, that's wonderful. So now we're now I'm doing that. Um so let me just put up let's share this one. It's thinking. Um, so at the end, I'm going to take you into Moodle and just uh, show you some of the resources that I've put in there for finding books and articles that are um, mostly open access. And then at the end, I hope to have a little bit of time where if anybody has specific questions or specific things they'd like to know about, uh, would love to hear so that I can um, make things more accessible. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the academic research publishing arena. Um, basically, there's, there's two types of sources or three types of sources that are out there. There's the proprietary sources, which are the like the databases and subs journal subscriptions that you get when you're at a big university. Um, they're fee-based uh, corporate publishing. They're fairly expensive. Um, and for us right now, we don't have um, access to any of these corporate databases, although I have some personal subscriptions 
um, which aren't too bad if you use them, you know, quite a lot. I know that uh, JSTOR has something called a JPass, and that's a database that's very useful for uh, theological library research. And I, I believe it's, you can pay monthly or yearly and the yearly is like on the order of like three or $400. Um, and that, that one might be something that if you're doing a lot of research for your thesis, that you might wanna think about getting that if you don't have access from somewhere else. Now these proprietary sources obviously have a lot better indexing and advanced searching options than the open source databases that you can find on the internet. Uh, then there's open access publishing, which is uh, journal article access, even academic peer reviewed. Oh, there's a lot of good stuff there that's not fee-based. Um, And it doesn't have a licensing agreement. And the licensing agreement is something that that's the expensive is part that libraries have to pay for. And there's been a fairly steady movement towards this model because they've realized that, um, you know, with some of the big schools that have a lot of money, they can get a lot of these access to these databases, but there's some smaller schools that can't afford it. And even some countries you know, that are have, having difficult getting science, you know, research and medical science and things like that because they can't afford to pay for all these publishing costs. And then there's also a hybrid model where some journals, uh, you probably notice this when you're looking at a certain journal online, they'll have some articles that are under a paywall and some that aren't. So some, you might actually be able to find the article by looking for it actually on the journal website. And some of them will be behind a paywall. So there's sort of this hybrid hybrid model that's going on there. And you know, one of these, I'm I'm a big open access publishing, you know, I I I'm I really hope that we do go more to that model. It seems like there's going to be some more roadblocks because obviously the publishing companies make a lot of money. Um, but if you're interested in, in, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, this is something, you know, access to information is, is really important in, in that regard. So that's something that you might want to think about. And when you do um, publish your theses or, or any, you know, you might think about making some of it open source for other people to read. And this is kind of, you know, what I've been talking about is that, you know, a lot of a lot of these journals, even the really high, you know, they don't pay their authors. So the publishing companies can make like, you know, 75% revenue because they're not paying for it. They're just making it accessible to people for a fee. So here's a couple that I think um, would be very useful to you if you don't have access to some of the uh, proprietary sources. Uh, BASE is something that I've used fairly often when people have asked me, you know, I really need this article, but I can't find it uh, free. That one's a really good, and it has a really good uh, search engine. Um, the Directory of Open Access Journals also has a lot of good open access uh, articles. And one that's, you know, of particular interest to us would be the Open Access Digital Theological Library. So that'll have a lot of subject specific articles that you can look for. And these are like big aggregators. So they're searching like a lot of a lot of the web at the same time. Now, some of these um, do require that you create a profile. I know not everybody loves that. I know I get a lot of, of spam too, but some of them do require that you create a profile, say who you are. Sometimes in some um, 
places like academia.edu, which I use quite a bit too. Um, they do want you to create a profile. Uh, ResearchGate is one where they'll actually want you to explain what your research is. That one's a little more science specific, um, but in order to get access to it, you have to kind of show that you're part of their, that you're gonna be sharing your research with other people and they'll share their research with you. Um, a few other tips um, that I just wanna go over. If you're looking for a specific article within a specific journal, it might be worth searching the journal website. You might want to try using Google Scholar or Deep Dive to actually find out where it's available, who the publisher is, get all the information you can before you go into some of these open access uh, sites. Also, a lot of authors. Like I've noticed this in academia.edu, there's actually a button where you can say, wow, I really want to read this article, but it's not available online. And you can actually ask the author to send it to you. So that's another way to find articles that um, maybe you've hit a paywall and, and you, you know, I think a lot of authors would be willing to send you a copy for your own research if it's one that is really important to your thesis. The other thing is, is that a lot of the database licenses um, allow peer-to-peer -peer sharing within a limited uh, research community. So, you know, we have like a group of, you're all a group of researchers here at Cherry Hill. And, you know, you know, think about helping each other to find uh, things that you need, um, because that's that's something that uh, folks also do. So my other tip is load up on library cards. Um, I have access to Seattle Public Library and King County Library System. I also pay a yearly fee to uh, the University of Washington as an independent researcher, so I can take out books there. And also I live in Shoreline. So Shoreline Community College also has a program where you can be an independent researcher and use their library. A lot of these have certain restrictions and certain terms depending on where you are. Um, for example, like the University of Washington, um, some databases you won't be able to get access to and even the ones that you do, you'll actually have to go into the library. You can't actually do it from home. You have to be within the, li within the library itself to do, do your searching. You can search for books, no problem. And you can put them on hold and go take them out and all that. But the electronic resources are a little more, um, a little more difficult um, based on their licensing agreements. But the circulating collection um, is great at some of these big libraries. So you want to check that out. And often, if you're an alumni, you get a lot better access. So I'm an alumni at University of British Columbia. And so I get some data base access from them as well as an alumnus. So if you, you know, you finished your grad school somewhere pay your alumni fee and, and get that card because it'll be really useful for your research. And then also always check the terms and conditions, like what can you actually do? Um, for example, at University of Washington, I can't do interlibrary loan because that's a fee-based thing for students and staff only. Um, so if that's something you really wanna do, you'll have to look probably at a public library uh, for that. Okay, so usually when you go to your public library, they will have at least one scholarly database, usually in their collection that you can you can work with. 
Um, it may be like Gale Academic One File is very common, Gale eBooks, ProQuest Research Library is another one. Um, and those will have scholarly peer reviewed journal journals that you can uh, search from home uh, with your library card and your number. They also will have databases for consumer re research, newspapers, magazines, encyclopedias, style guides, you know, any of those like statistics type things, those will be in there as well. They have interlibrary loan services, which is very, very helpful, but just remember that those usually take quite a quite a lot of time. Like I'd give yourself about a month um, if there's a book that you really need. I'd give yourself about a month to get it, a month or two to get it. And then there's also state libraries, which are open to residents of a certain state. So, for example, the South Carolina State Library, um, they have state information and they have um, a general collection of books that you can take out and journal articles and all that sort of thing. The Washington State Library collection here, where I am in Seattle, um, they mostly have collections related to state government. But, you know, depending where you are, check out your state library because this is something that's open to you and they may have books that that you you need. Okay, then we have the special libraries. Now, you might call Cherry Hills Library special library. Um, we have, you know, it's theological. It's uh, like a law, law library or a theological library or a museum library. And there are some special libraries and museums that have collections that are specific to pagan religion and esoteric topics. Um, here's a picture of Don Frew sitting at his desk at, at Ascenton Research Library. Uh, they have a non-circulating collection, but um, you, you can look through and they have a fairly good search where you can see what kind of books they have. And I'm sure they'd be happy to answer questions. And if you go in, there's like a number of books you can, you can go in and look at it. That's in San Francisco. Um, the New Age Movements, Occultism, and Spiritual and Research Library is in um, Valdosta State University in Georgia. And it's put together by Guy Frost, who's a cataloger there. And he's been collecting all kinds of pagan ephemera, scanning them, and making them available online. So if you're in the historical you know, taking classes on pagan history. He has an amazing collection of things that are already scanned. You, you can go in, you can look at it, you can download it. Some of the materials are still in boxes. So sometimes you will, if you're searching for things, you'll find that it's in box number 32. Well, that means it hasn't been scanned yet. So um, you'll, you'd have to go down there to, to get into that box. But that's another... Um, another way to do it. I'm also creating uh, a catalog of the books that I have here. Um, I have thousands of pagan books and uh, journals and newsletters that have been given to me over time from various places that I'm going to be able to put online and I'll put it into the, into the middle library when I finish the catalog. And that way, if there's a book in there that you need, let me know and I can scan it scan the the portions that you need out of it and send it to you or we can even talk about mailing it as well if if that's helpful so specific items it Dana, Dana. yes may i ask a question here absolutely uh, it sounded like you are possibly running a little lending library right out of your own collection. Is that correct? Right. Well, that's certainly generous and extraordinary. That's fantastic. Well, I trust you all. I mean, you know, and I can, a lot of times you don't need the whole book, right? You just need a part of it. And, you know, if I can help you with, with your research, I'm perfectly happy to do so. 
Are you people, using, do you have a name for, do you have a name or are you just operating as yourself? <laughs> um, I, I, right now it's called the Alvarin Library. It's part of like, I used my middle name, but I, I'll probably retitle it something when I, when I actually finish scanning everything. I've only scanned a small portion of it. But a lot of the things that are in my collection are from elders in my community, people that have sent me things. So it's like a lot of it is, you know, other people helping me. So I'm happy to help, you know, if there's something I have that is useful to you. Um, uh, that's pretty exciting. That That's fantastic. So th those are all physical resources. And you're talking about scanning passages for scholars that might need passages exactly and then you provide them with the bibliographic information and the page numbers and all that stuff so that the citation can be done. Yeah. that's really cool yeah thank, thank you yeah absolutely so let's say you're looking for a very specific item some of the questions i get are usually um i need to find these articles and i'm hitting a paywall okay so if you get it out of Google Scholar, or you get it out of a bibli bibliographical reference from somewhere else. Um, if it's a book, use WorldCat, Google Books, open access books, Internet Archive. A lot of times you can find all the bibliographic information that you need in WorldCat, which I'll hopefully have time to show you later. We'll search for something in WorldCat. It will tell you which libraries have the book you want that you can access it close by. And it'll start with whatever is the closest library to you that you have access. For articles, use some of those open access aggregators that I mentioned earlier and the journal databases. And as well as if you have access, I know I was talking to Angela earlier, she has access to proprietary databases through her college. Um, so that's another way to find a specific article that you're looking for. Can I ask a quick question? Is this Absolutely. stuff available somewhere in writing so that I can just read it? Because I'm not going to remember everything you're saying. <laughs> There's no oh, way. Absolutely. I will um, I can, um, send stuff out. And also all these resources that I'm talking about are in the Moodle. Oh, library. OK. OK, cool. As well. Right. I so, haven't I haven't been in grad schools uh, in about twenty years, so things either. have changed. <laughs> yeah, they have changed quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So all that's in there, and I can send out this PowerPoint too if if it's helpful. Okay, here's another thing that may be new to some of you who haven't been in grad school for a long time, like myself. Document object identifiers. So this is a unique number that is assigned to an online journal, book, or so something that's online on the internet, it's its exact number associated with that one item. So for some of those um, databases that I had talked about before, you can actually go in and say, this is the number and find all the places on the internet that that particular item is at, and then look for the one that's not paywall. And we'll take a look at a look at that later. But it's really handy. You can also take a document object and a identifier, put it into Google, and hit enter, and it will bring up every place that that is listed somewhere. It may not be the full text. It may just be a citation, but a lot of times you can find the full text. And I think there was a, there was a study that I just read last week that said that the DOI number is better than like searching by the title or the author or a lot of these other things. Like it comes up a lot better with this particular individual number. Who knows why, but such is AI. So let's say you're researching a specific topic. 
So for this, you can use, you know, a lot of those resources I talked about, the open access resources. You can try Google Scholar, which is actually fairly good. Deep Dive is proprietary, um, but you can search in there and you can find the articles that, you know, you might need. Some of them might, you know, could be affordable if it's something that's perfect, you know, $15, $20. You know, there's also ones that are quite more expensive than that. So if it, that article better be <laughs> pretty awesome. Um, but you can use it as a search engine to find citations and then use some of these other things, take those citations and see if you can find the articles elsewhere that aren't paywalled. And you can also take them again to, if you have access to an academic library, wonderful. Go in, search for the article for the articles there and download them to your to your email or to a to a drive. Uh, uh, one thing that I always do, and and this is something that even if you did grad school in the past, if you find that one perfect scholarly article, search all the citations and go look up all that stuff too. Um, that's one way to, to find uh, more things that are related and also look at what's happened in the past up to that point. So if you're doing like a literature review, you know, if you find two or three really good articles that have really good citations, you'll be able to go back and do your literature review and find what are all the important things leading up to what you're gonna be doing. Okay, so here's some general sort of online searching tips. Always look for the advanced search option. So in any of these open access databases, the library, databases, use the advanced. The Unless you really, really know the particular database well, um, all of them have different ways of searching for things. But if you use the advanced search, often you'll get fields where you can say, I want this time period, I want this author, I want this title, um, I want this DOI and it makes it a lot quicker. The other thing is in some of them, they might not say advanced search, they might say it's the help page. And that will give you, here's how you search our particular database. So for example, ATLA, which is a proprietary database that you can find at academic libraries. This is a database, um, from the American Theological Library Association. It's the main religion database, um, is an EBSCO database. So if you know how to search EBSCO databases, you'll be fine. But you can also go in and find out how that particular database is set up so that you can get your information back correctly. Now, some of the online uh, open access web searches, some of them have different ways of doing. For example, instead of and, they use a plus in front of the word. And if you want to exclude a word, they use a minus in front of the word, which is different than our and, or, or not Boolean searches that you know, we used to, that we do in the proprietary databases. The other thing you can look at is um, this symbol right here is the open access symbol. So sometimes you'll be on a page and it's just the, all it has is the citation and maybe a short abstract, but off to the side over here, there'll be this, this open access symbol. And if you click on it, it will often take you directly to an uh, op for, uh, open text uh, PDF of the article you're looking at, even though it's not actually on the page that you're currently on. 
Um, another thing you can do is in Google search, you can search for the title of the article you're looking at and PDF or P file type colon PDF. So that'll search for the title of the article in PDF form. So that'll be a scanned article from a journal. So here is an academic uh, database from a public library. And so this is their advanced search screen. This is just a screenshot, but it gives you an idea of the things that you can search by. So even if you go further down here, like maybe you only want peer, re peer reviewed journals, your professor is saying, don't, don't give me, you know, only give me peer reviewed documents. You can put that there. You can also ask for full text only. Um, you can search these, these are drop downs. So maybe you know the exact title, maybe you know the subject heading. This will all make it a lot uh, much more efficient searching. You won't get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hits. You, you'll get like 40. And you also have these operators that you can use as well. So this gives you more a way to more efficiently search than just having the keyword bar and trying trying your best. So here's an example of an ATLA database. And I usually put this in just to show how you can look at the record and find more things. Oops. So here you can see that there's subjects associated with this particular record. And all of these are clickable if you're in the library. So you might be able to see, oh, well, now after searching for this particular article, I realize this is the subject that I need. Some of them get quite specific. This one is maybe not the best example, but some of the subjects are quite specific. So you can just search by that subject itself. So um, I'm in the library. Um, you know, I work about four to eight hours a week. Um, I'll I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And that is the librarian at cherryhillseminary.org is the email you would use for that. We can set up a Zoom. I have my own Zoom account if you need more help, or I'm happy to talk to you on the phone. Um, if you're at your college and university library, there, there's usually specific subject librarians that I think every time I've gone in, they're, they're usually very helpful and want to help you. I mean, even if you're not, I mean, obviously they're gonna help their students and staff first, but a lot of times if there's something you need, they, they'll point you in the right direction. The other thing I'll suggest is looking up research guides. So for example, um, at University of Washington, they have a religion subject guide. So you'll go there on the website and it'll say, okay, you're just starting out. Here's some ideas for databases you should look at. Here's some ideas for some websites you should look at to kind of get started. Whoops. And one of the really great ones there's is the Harvard uh, Research Guide, the Harvard Divinity School Research Guide. That one is amazing and is a really good place to start looking through different religious uh, materials. So here is our library's namesake, Judy Hero. Um, our library is named after her. 
and she played a vital role in the development of Cherry Hill. She was an early adopter and helped get us started, and so the library is named after her. And we're just going to get into there now. I'm going to take a look at the chat um, first. JSTOR, okay, it's an, ac yeah, it's an academic search engine, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Bryce. <laughs> yes, I'm going to, going to post the recording. Yes, that's one one issue with ResearchGate. I I've, I've tried it a few times and tried to, but yeah, they they really want to know what you're looking for and how you're going to help them and be part of their community as well. Okay, we might do some of these in person after. Let's stop sharing that. And let's go to the library. Can everybody see this or no? No, nothing showing up. Okay. I'm on the library website. Why won't it share? Share screen. Let's try it again. Okay. All right. So can everybody see this now? We are in Moodle. You click on the library from the left. And here is the library resources that I put together this year. So here's just some things about contacting me. And then here where it starts research tools, because we're using Moodle and Moodle is a classroom, <laughs> it's, it's, I have to set it up as if it was a Moodle class. So even though these are just like basically a list of different websites with descriptions, it looks like it's in a classroom format. So you kind of have to scroll down and look at where I've put some like breaks. So here's like some of the basic re research tools that I was talking about um, that you can use to just search across various literature. These are some additional journals, aggregators, dissertations, theses, um, that either are general or for specifically for religious databases. So there's the directory of open access journals, open access books, uh, Sage Open. Um, some of you may be familiar with Sage journals. They have a number of uh, journals in the humanities. Uh, they do have some open access materials. So that's the link for that. 
Uh, Open Research Online is out of the UK. Uh, they have a, a number of, of things that might be of interest. This is the Open Access Digital li Theological Library we were talking about. So let's see if this will work. So this is the Theological Library. Okay, I have access to Moodle, but I don't see a library on there anywhere. And yes, I'm logged in. Huh. Well, maybe you haven't. Oh, wait, asked. students, library, cha chaplaincy. It's just as courses, though. Maybe open that up and see if it's under it. OK, yeah, it's a separate another another jump. Thanks. Yeah, yeah it's kind of embedded a little bit. So here's the uh, advanced search. find something to, to search for here. Okay. So now I happen to know, I mean, sometimes you, ha you have to look at certain citations to see, but pastoral counseling is a Library of Congress subject term. So we can put that in as a subject. So let's say you're doing pastoral counseling and you're looking at like trauma-informed. So here's one of them here. And if you scroll further down, you'll get the subject headings, some other sub subject headings that you can look at. I'm sorry, I'm being a pest, but I can't find that. I don't know where you, how you got that search thing. Are you are you in the library now? Yeah, and but all I I see uh <laughs> welcome to the Open Access Digital Theological Library. Mm -hmm. Now do I have to click advanced search? Advanced search. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Yep. Sorry. No, <laughs> no it's fine. This is this is why we're doing this because you know sometimes like I, I was. Have my my last, my graduate program that I was, the last time I was in a graduate program was the first online graduate program that North Carolina State University ever offered. So we didn't have all this stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my daughter's at school in the Northeast and I was like drooling over all the databases she has. I'm like, oh my God, it's wonderful. But so, yes, it depends on which school you go to, what they have, you know. Well, so, in 2001, they didn't have a whole heck of a lot, let's tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> so how and when do we get Moodle access? Because I don't apparently have that access. Oh, well, let me write that down because we can fix I that. just messaged Holly, Brian. If that was Brian, I'm not sure who that was. That was Brian. Yeah, I, I just is. messaged Holly because I said, hey, I didn't get access. And she said, oh, oops, and then she, she gave me access. OK, so here, what happened was I clicked on the title, and it brought me to Internet Archive, which is another place that has a lot of uh, scan documents. And the book is actually in here. So a lot of times, if you hit that open access or you look at the link, it'll tell you like where you can find it full text. It doesn't always work as we know, um, but sometimes you can find the full text of the documents. Okay, so let's try.
Let's try another one. Sure why it doesn't like this one. Oh, I'm little. Okay, let's see. Let me go down a little further. So there's a lot of things that I put in here and I wish I could organize it differently so it's easier. Here's some of the, um, the databases that if you do have access to the library will be really useful to you. Uh, this is JSTOR, at ATLA, PsycInfo, if you're doing uh, the counseling track. EBSCO Religion and Philosophy Collection is really good. Uh, I added some statistics, journal and journal article searching from various other places. Google Books, so these are catalogs, union catalogs. WorldCat is your find all for books. So now here, it's sometimes it's hard to find, but if you click on this right here, this whatever this thing is, you'll get the advanced search. And since we have um, Ronald Hutton coming, let's say you want to look up his writings. Um, let's do keyword. Paganism, just to get us a little closer. Now over here, you'll see that they have some index differently. So you probably want to take Hutton comma Ronald and probably this one too. I would say that one's probably also him. So here's some of his um, books. Let's click on one to see what happens. So if you scroll down a little bit, when you click on the book, it'll say, because it has, it has in my computer um, where my location is. So it's saying, OK. Your most uh, close copy is Seattle Public Library, downtown. Also, University of Washington has it. Shoreline Community College Library has it, which is actually closest for me. And if you click borrow, it will take you to the library. Well, that's not working, but. Let's see, you can also click on share information. This will give you the subjects you can look through and search by. So maybe you're interested in uh, you know, paganism in general or Great Britain. 
So if you click on that, it will bring up all the books that have that as a subject heading. And then you can click on those. A lot of times, um, a lot of these will also have, if you see over here in this corner, your faces are kind of covering it for me, but it also says rent this item. So there are some uh, companies that will rent you the book for a certain amount of time. And if that, you know, if you know that you need this book for sure and you can't find it anywhere, that's a really good way to go. Um, you know, they all cost different amounts, but it's usually not that bad to, to rent it for a certain amount of time. So you'll have it and then it will eventually disappear and go back into the collection, like as if it was a, a public library ebook. So that's another one that's good to look at. And let's see, let's look in base really quick here. Can everybody see the base open screen yet? Yes, we can. Oh, excellent. Very good. Okay, so you can see at the top. Advanced All your base search. are belong to us. Pardon? It's, a, it's just an old joke. I said, all your base are belong to us. Oh, okay. <laughs> from a badly translated video game opening. <laughs> so here's the advanced search for base. And hopefully I'm not, you know, I'm going to give you one that was one of Bryce's. Hope I'm not calling you out there, Bryce. But I got to have an example. That's okay. I appreciate the example. It shows me that there are ways. I do have hope. <laughs> All right. So here's a title. Development of the rash type loneliness scale. This was an example. And we're in the advanced search. Okay, so one thing about these, often when you pull it up, so you can see how there's one, two, like, and the, there's more like below this, there's more documents with it. The first couple might not give you the full text, they'll go to the paywalled one, but there's usually a way to get around it. So if we look, open this one up, see it has the, the closed, like get access, but you can't, if you scroll down a little further, it'll tell you how to, how to find it uh, for a cost. But if we go back to our search and go down to the next one, looky there.
full text of the article. So a lot of times if you get the list of the article you're looking for and the first one is still closed, try some of the ones below it because sometimes it will open. Um, and also sometimes there will be, let me see if I can find a, see if I can move their faces a little bit. I can. And then let's try a DOI number. So um, Bryce was totally kind. And when he sends me his citations, they're usually pretty full, which helps me. So here is a DOI number at the bottom of the citation of the article he was looking for, and we're gonna search it by DOI. Spiritual reminiscence therapy for older people. So let's click on this first one. And this one is open. Okay, let's not use that one. I am human. So let's scroll down to this one. You can see this little link right here. So sometimes you will have to look around a little bit to find it. So this one will tell you, you can get access through your institution, that's your, your university or college, or you can buy access for a certain amount of time as well. This one I did end up finding somewhere else, full text. Sometimes you do have to like, it's sort of like a hunting investigation, so. Those are some of the things you can do. And just remember that um, I'm here. Um, if it's getting frustrating, just you know, send me an email and say, look, I've been trying to find this article for a long time and I'm having trouble finding it. And hopefully I can hunt around. I actually have fun hunting around and looking for stuff. So, you know, use me. I'm here. Um, yeah. So is there any questions? I know that's like kind of like drinking from a fire hose. Um, but I will make the, um, the video available. And also um, I can try and maybe consolidate some of this and maybe put it on the slides so that people can try out some of the, the databases on their own and see how it's working for them.
Maureen. Hi, thank you. That was lovely. I enjoyed every bit of it. Having just finished it, I was sharing with Karen and, and I think you earlier, I just finished with the doctoral program at Arkansas State University. We had a lot of resources that we could use like this. I spent a lot of time poking around it, but you've done a marvelous job of making it much clearer, bringing it to life, um, getting into it with us. I've had other orientations to databases and, and graduate research. I have, you know, I've been through this before, library personnel, what have you. I think you've done a really marvelous job of, uh, of um, being the scholar's friend. So congratulations for a, a lovely presentation. I really like it a lot. Um, I'm not a student at Cherry Hill right now. I'm getting ready to interview. Uh, I've applied for a teaching position. I'm getting ready to interview for that. So I want to know what's available to the students to use for their uh, for their papers and so forth. And you've, you've answered th that question for me. So it's, it's very extensive and it's wonderful. Congratulations. Right. And there, like I said, there's there's ways to sometimes find stuff that's, you know, you know, not not an untraditional way. So sometimes I've, I've stumbled on stuff like that. As a matter of fact, I stumbled on some uh, two scanned or actually more than that, but uh, several scanned in books from the mm -hmm. 18, late eighteen eighties, full text scanned in books. But you could turn the pages and read through them, or I think I'll scroll them down. A couple of novels that were written in the late eighteen hundreds uh, by an Arkansas an obscure Arkansas author. Um, his name won't come to me right now, but it will. Opie, Opie Pope Reed, R-E-A-D, Opie Pope Reed. And I was just poking around in Google Scholar and boom, they were both there. And I was able to read pages and pages and pages of it. Really, you know, I didn't expect to be able to do that. It was for free. I just yeah. literally stumbled on it one night. Yeah. Does anybody have any specific questions about their thesis or anything that I'm not even ready to think about that. This is my first semester. <laughs> Let me get through that first and then I'll bug you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely bug me. Um, you know, like I said, it for me it's some it's fun sometimes trying to find <laughs> random things. Um and if I can, I'll definitely, I, I'll definitely help. Okay, well, that's all I have for today. Um, librarian at cherryhillseminary.org. Uh, send me an email. Happy to Zoom. Happy to talk on the phone. Um, or, you know, just say, I'm looking for these articles. Send me an email. And if you can't find them, I'll, I'll, uh, try and look for them for you and send them to you. Uh, Adrian, Thank you so much, Donna, for this presentation. It was awesome um, and a really helpful resource for my research. Um, I just wanted to add something that I just put in the chat as well. There's a okay. Facebook group that's really helpful for folks that are, don't have as much access to libraries. It's called Ask for PDFs from People with Institutional Access. Um, oh. and it has a lot of the resources that you shared as well, Donna, as well as additional ones for, for digging around and trying to find articles um, mm -hmm. and books online. So I definitely recommend it. It's actually where I've gotten most of my school articles and resources that I couldn't find elsewhere. Um, and if you can't find it anywhere else, somebody you can post in the group and someone will who has the access to that institution will share the PDF with you. That is awesome. I'm going to add that today. <laughs> Yay. I will put it in the library. Thanks, Adrian. That looks like a Facebook group. Is that right? Yes, it's a Facebook group. Okay, that's right. That's right. I typed that and that's what I got. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I am a, joining the group. A few of those out there <laughs> where, where you can ask, like, it's sort of like a peer to peer thing, um, which is allowed in most cases. Yeah, I would give the caveat that if it's going to be an official Cherry Hill resource, that this group does not particularly mind if it's not completely allowed. Um, so it may not be something that we can formally recommend um, as an institution at Cherry Hill, but it is something I recommend as a student. Okay. 
Um, and there yes. are there are legal ways to get the articles in the group. You can choose not to do the illegal ways. Um, yes. Yeah, and there's there there are some other ways of finding articles that you know sometimes it's you know be careful searching certain certain ones. Um, I do every once in a while if I'm really like really having trouble finding something, but sometimes they're you know they have a lot of viruses and you know you got to be kind of careful. So you know try try using all these like traditional methods first and then. But yeah, I mean, researchers share information with each other all the time, and I, I think it's expected. So, I think something like that, where you're you're either asking the author or asking somebody else, you know, I think that's perfectly legit for us to do. Okay, um, I'll stick around for a little while, but um, you know, you're free. We have Go do searching and have fun. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Dana. I have a Absolutely. copy of the transcript of this. If you would like it, I can send it to you for the posting. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Awesome. Um, can you remind me your email? Yeah, just, just send it to librarian at cherryhillseminary.org. Sure thing. I'll send it over right now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for your work on this. Okay.